1998. I believe that's when it came out. Uh, Metal Gear Solid. The very first Metal Gear Solid game on the PS1. Sniper Wolf fight. Uh, when you get to what you would call uh, a really extremely long um, walkway in uh, Metal Gear Solid, um, basically Meryl gets well. If you spoilers, if you haven't played against one, I imagine everyone has at this point. But uh, when Meryl gets shot, uh, it um, you have a, you don't have a sniper rifle on you, so you basically have to travel all the way back to um, is it the it's either B1 or B2. You have to travel back to the uh, the warehouse. Um, and I remember being such a memorable moment because the the story in Metal Gear is is crazy it's it's cool it's in it's 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 all the extremes you could imagine uh and literally you have to go all the way back you have to go travel back through uh the nuclear weapons warehouse where you can't use any weapons uh and then you gotta go back i think past vulcan raven through the uh the first fight with the tank which is again there's another memorable moment in metal gear solid but and you gotta go all the way back and just to pick up the sniper rifle, which is a long ass trip back, um, just to fight Meryl, and then you're literally just left not knowing whether she's alive, dead, or not. And uh, obviously, uh, that plays into the end of the game anyway, um, depending on whether you submit in the torture section or not. But um, yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's probably one of the most memorable moments, especially on PS1. And there is a lot. But that is one that just sort of comes to mind. Uh, as I'm, I don't mind backtracking in games, but that was the first, one of my first real experiences backtracking such a distance in the game. Uh, so that was probably probably my top PS1 moment. I've got a few of them, but uh, number two, Goldeneye. So Goldeneye 007 on the N64. Possibly the most. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, possibly the the most famous uh, N64 shooter in the history of the system. Really, I would probably say I can't think of much else that is as memorable as Goldeneye. Even though it has aged quite badly by today's standards, um, still a game personally that I absolutely adore. Um, you basically the. There's a lot of difficult levels in Golden Eye, or tricky levels, should I say. The, the one defending Natalia is a nightmare because she consistently always gets in the way of your guns and you always end up killing her uh, accidentally. Uh, especially Cradle. The, I think the last, I believe that's the last level to go. I've shot her so many times accidentally. Uh, but it's the. It's not a difficult level in terms of um, what you're doing in the level. It's finding um, you have to find like a, I think it's like a, a Russian minister. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's in uh, Stalingrad Park. And if you know the N64, the graphics are quite um, not bland, but it can be difficult to find find him sometimes. Uh, I always did it when I was younger. Maybe not so as I'm getting older, but it was always a challenging part of that particular game. Just finding the chat, just finding this, this Russian minister. And many levels in Goldeneye are like that, uh, but in particular, uh, definitely uh, Stalingrad Park for sure. Uh, and I, I think I've only ever beaten it on easy and norm. I don't know if I've ever tried doing it on uh, the harder difficulty. I really am quite lost on this world, I don't even know where I'm going. It's been... I've built this world with my brother about 12, maybe 13, 14 years ago, something like that. It was a long, long time ago. And yes, uh, By Moria is uh, a reference to uh, Chuck, the TV show. Uh, another one on the list, number three, uh, Sonic 3. 
Uh, I believe it's just Sonic 3 and not Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but it's the Carnival Night Zone. Not a difficult level per se, but what is difficult about that particular level is the... Um, there's a section in the game on Carnival Night where you've got these moving platforms. And the uh, moving platforms... Um, you have to jump on them uh, as they right as they come up these like red cube cubicle type things, and if and if you have to jump on them as they come up so that when you hit it it goes further down. And I always found that kind of tricky um, for some reason. I don't know why exactly. I've been here already. Where am I going? Should really put some lights up here and some railings would be a good idea. For some reason, that was always a, always a tricky one in uh, Sonic 3. There are other moments I can obviously think of that are probably more. I'm flying. I'm on fire. Uh, that are more difficult, but for some reason, that one always sticks in my mind. Uh, going back to Metal Gear Solid again now, um, it will become a theme, I swear. Uh, Metal Gear Solid. Two Sons of Liberty. Uh, there are the water sections in video games. For some reason, tend to be parts of games that people tend to find more difficult. Yeah, so Sons of Liberty with the uh, water level. So there's a point in the game where you have to s you uh, you have to go to I think it's Big Shell One, and uh, basically uh, you've got this insane bomber guy that basically puts bombs over and you've got to disable all the bombs and uh, it's it's an it's an earlier point in the storyline but you disable all the bombs and there's a big there's a one big bomb that goes off essentially when you disable all the little bombs so basically the big shell I think it's part part one of the big shell blows up and there's a chap in it called um, do you know I can't remember the guy's name he's a bomb disposal expert he taught um, uh, whatever the dude's called, I can't remember the guy's name now. Um, dude on roller skates, you have to fight him as Raiden or Raiden. Um, he blows up the big show, and essentially you have to swim through that section with Emma, which is Otacon's uh, sister. And that's a really, really. It's not difficult, but it can be really, really tricky to navigate that area um, without running out of air and drowning and stuff. So for some reason that always sticks in mind, and of course, the uh, vamp fight as well, for some reason. The, um, when you have to shoot him, and eventually he sort of drowns in the pool, but obviously later you find out he's not dead because he's in uh, Guns of the Patriots, Metal Gear Solid 4. But that, that's another one that sticks in my mind. And then we'll go to number 5, which is another Metal Gear moment. Um, most of these games listed are going to be the older games, the older generation stuff. Um, nothing against the newer stuff, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I play the more modern stuff, but I don't have as much. I don't have passions right word. There's just something less about it. Maybe it might just be nostalgia. Too. It's probably just nostalgia, but uh, that's kind of how I look at it. And that would be uh, obviously the end in. Snake Eater. Now, Snake Eater, in, this is probably quite a popular opinion. It, it, to me, Snake Eater is the best Metal Gear game of the lot. Uh, just just for the environments and the fact that you can go to uh, so, many, so many different areas within the game. It's uh, fighting the end. The, the end is just like a tremendous boss fight. And uh, it's 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 um it's a fight that you can approach in so many different ways, and it takes forever. Unless you do one of there's a couple of things you can do to, to you can fight him fair and square, or I didn't know this at the time, but you can shoot him in one of the cutscenes previously in the game, and if you get him, uh, you don't he's dead basically. You don't have to fight that fight him at all. But um that that's. Probably, but it's fighting means more fun. Or you can, I know on the PS2 version, you can change your clock on your PS2, and if you, I think if you turn the timer up or something, I, I don't remember the full how you do it exactly, but you can essentially kill him 
he just he would just die of old age. But I always preferred to fight him the proper way, if I'm honest. But it, that's an, always been an interesting fight. And it goes on for ages, trying to find him, trying to locate where he is and stuff. There's an extreme amount of fun, and it takes it takes forever if you're um, if you're doing it properly. So that that's one that's always come to mind. And I, don't know, I haven't played it. In, it's many years since I've played it, but I, I just it's always really really memorable. There, there's a lot of memorable moments in Metal Gear with the boss fights. Um, they're always weird and quirky. Which would move us on to number six. Which would be Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The Water Temple. Now, I'm not going to say much about this because I imagine most people at this point would probably know this one. Uh, the Water Temple is an incredibly tricky, le tricky dungeon to beat in Ocarina of Time. It's not impossible, but it's, in my memory it's the one that sticks out the most. And I know the 3DS version has improved that and, and made it a much better experience. And uh, I know Nintendo have done that with a couple of their games. They did that with uh, Wind Waker, uh, having to pick up all the items in the is it in the water in the sea. Uh, you have to find there are certain things you've got to find. I can't remember what they're called now. The time it's been many years since I played Wind Waker, but uh, in Ocarina, obviously, you have to keep switching between the iron boots and your normal boots. Uh, so that that's that's one that always comes to mind. Uh, pretty much from day one, and I think that goes. Yep, yeah, that's where the other thing was. I can just about see daylight. But that one is one that will always stick with, with me for how freaking tricky it was. I always used to find the the forest temple um, a weird one. That the the first half of Ocarina is relatively easy it's not difficult but when you move on to the adult sections it, it starts to get more progressively hard and then you go back as a child uh parts like the uh, when you get down into the well as a child there, there are all sorts of moments but the water temple is the one that sticks out the most now don't get me started on bloody breath of the wild and the breaking weapons mechanic because uh i thought breath of the wild i thought ocarina before breath of the wild came up was the best probably the best zelda game again nostalgia most probably uh, but Breath of the Wild is probably the best one to me, uh, although I have played a bit of Link to the Past recently, the uh, the Game Boy Advance port, which I bought for the uh, GameCube player many, a few, uh, last year, I think it was. Uh, but Breath of the Wild, the, the breaking of weapons mechanic was just irritating. Um, I hope, they'll probably keep it in, but I hope they get rid of it for the next one, because it just got annoying. <laughs> but that's a, that's a personal taste one, I suppose. Um... Number seven, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now, nah, people are probably saying Sonic 2. What? Sonic 2 for the Mega Drive? That, that's a really. Other than the, maybe the last stage, it's quite an easy game. No, the Master System version of Sonic 2. Uh, the Master System version of Sonic 2 is the version I played before I'd ever played any any other Sonic game. I'd played them before I'd ever even played any of the Mega Drive versions. Um, Sonic 1 on the Master System is a relatively easy game, um, but for some reason, whenever you get a collection of Sonic games, Sonic 1 is all, a lot of the time is on the Master System, that cop version is on all the collections, 2 never is for some weird reason, I don't know why that is, but Sonic 2 is really effing difficult. <laughs> the second level on Sonic 2 on the Master System is a, there's a level with like a hang glider, and you have to literally, um, you have to, you grab it, you just run into the hang glider, and then, and then, obviously you jump off an area, off a platform. But you have to go now. If you know the Master System pad, it's a tiny, dinky little pad. It's it's probably about the size of the NES pad, if not smaller. And what's so difficult about it is you have to, as you go, as you jump on the hang glider and run across, you have to go up, down, up, down, up, down on the D-pad, on the mass system. Now the mass system, is, as I said, is a tiny, tiny little uh, controller, and it's really, really hard. Uh, I remember as a kid being just... I, I, to this day, I've never cleared Sonic 2 on the mass system, even when I had it. Uh, because it's just an incredibly difficult game. 
uh, and it, it, it gets harder, more progressively harder as you go through the game, and I've never got any further than... I think I got to Green Hill Zone? I think it was Green Hill Zone? But that, it's not an, not an easy game at all. And I've only, and I've, I've never cleared it, uh, but if you want a challenging Sonic game, Sonic 2 on the Master System uh, will eat you alive. It, it's really difficult. I mean, the Green Hill stage on Sonic 2, I think actually it's called Green Hill, sorry, not Green Hill. Uh, it's really goddamn difficult. And, uh, yeah, that kicked my ass. I, I, it's one I want to go back and play. Sonic 1, for some reason, is, is other than the slippery mechanics of Sonic in the Bass System versions, um, it's quite easy, but for some reason they made Sonic 2 so much more difficult. Uh, maybe it's like a, a like a Mega Man type thing, like with replay value, but goddamn is it difficult. Okay, I go to number 8, uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver. Um, we're talking about the original Gold and Silver, not Heart Gold and Soul Silver, um, although I have been told that the 3DS remake, 3DS remakes, or was it DS remakes? I can't remember if it was DS or 3DS, but one of the two. Um, uh, not a particularly difficult game, uh, but there are parts. The dragon part comes to mind with the, um, is it Lance with all these dragon, po dragon Pokemon and their ice attacks? But the one that always, hello. The one that always comes to mind for me has got to be Miltank. I don't have anything against cows, by the way. Um, but um, I hate that Pokemon with a passion. Um, that thing has kicked my ass so many times. Um, I know how to deal with it now, but at the time when it, the game came out, and even years later, the, um, the difficulty with... Uh, <laughs> Dealing with bloody um, girl time because it's got it's got there's a particular move uh, in it called rollout, uh, which gets progressively more powerful uh, when it's used. I, I learned that you could use dig or fly to counter that move, but incredibly difficult to beat if you don't know what you're doing. Um, it's a really powerful move roller. It could get progressively more ex more powerful with each hit. And uh, I, I <laughs> it's not that difficult now, but when I encountered it, it kicked my ass on several occasions. Uh, but I would say, I would say, that I think it's, I believe it's after the gym leader uh, who has all the birds. I can't remember what an hair. Is it her or his name? Is it? Is it Falcon or something? I, I can't remember. But um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know what it what it's like to actually use that Pokemon in a squad of six. But um, God damn it, kicked my ass on several occasions. Okay, number nine, uh, Pokemon Yellow. Uh, this isn't. It's difficult until you you just have to grind essentially. Which is a Pokemon Yellow Pikachu edition, which is essentially uh, when you start yellow, obviously you, you get a Pikachu. That's what you start. We start with an electric type, and obviously ground isn't affected by uh, electric attacks, other than Paralyzed Wave, which is quite a handy move to have. But other than that, so you have to grind quite early in that game, and I think you get like a is it uh, Pikachu? No, Pidgey, Geodude. Essentially, uh, all those types of moves until you uh, are powerful enough to actually beat Brock. It's not hard, it can be done, but it does require quite a bit of grinding. And oftentimes, I've done it in red and blue as well, you will find that you'll over level to the point where they essentially won't listen to, what you, listen to anything you're saying, which is always fun. Um, so, yeah, that, that's another one that always comes to mind. Uh, number 10, Streets of Rage. Uh, now there are many, many memorable moments in Streets of Rage. Uh, Streets of Rage 4, to be exact. 
Uh, yeah, so Streets Rage 4, sorry, no, Streets Rage 1, sorry. Although 4, 4 or 2 is probably my favourite. 3 is a weird game, uh, especially the how much more difficult the uh, the Western version is compared to the uh, the Japanese version, if memory serves me correct. That, that, that's an incredibly difficult game. And it's it's so censored on the Western version as well. It, it's quite weird. Uh, but Street Rage 1, the Blaze Twins. They are incredibly frustrating to fight, only because they can't, I think they're probably a bit OP, to be honest, from what I've from what memory says. But basically, you fight these twins that look exactly like Blaze, essentially. And they're difficult enough to, to they're not like unbelievably hard, but they're really tricky to beat. And then you have to fight them again. You have to you go through all the uh, bosses on um, again at the, on the very last level, which is a bit of a punch to the gut, given you've only got so many continues to, uh, and you don't also get the uh, you don't get the guy with the, um, the the Robocop police car type guy doesn't actually appear at all on that level. So that makes it more difficult. So that's always been a tricky one. Uh, the next one is pretty general. I, I just remember the game being really quite a tricky game, not hard per se, but which would be um, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time, <laughs> which I believe was a game that was made by, I think it was Infograms, and I think it might have been published by Ubisoft, although I can't quite remember if that's correct or not. Um, so yeah, that, that's one I really, really wanted to pick up on eBay, but uh, the, the, some of these games are uh, uh, not even good games are fetching a fair price, a, a fair hefty price, some of these games. Um, but that's definitely one I want to pick up on eBay one day, maybe. If I can uh, find that. Uh, number 12. Resident Evil Code Veronica or Code Veronica X depending on which port you're playing because there is several of them uh, it was originally a Dreamcast exclusive but then came to PS2 uh, Gamecube uh, and then obviously there's been I don't know how many, there's been hundreds of ports of, the, uh, of those games at this point but um that's another game I've never cleared, just because it was quite a tricky, um, tricky game. It, uh, especially the um, the stretchy dudes. They're incredibly frustrating to um, even like, deal with. But I never cleared it. I got into that uh, that problem with Resident Evil, where which as I got better at it, I didn't have that issue so much, but the most annoying issue is when you run out of ammo, when you don't you can't deal with the boss because you just don't have the ammunition. And obviously the knife is not going to help you in any situation. Um, but that, that that's um, the section with Chris. After you uh, play the Claire section, obviously you go through the game as, as Chris Redfield. Uh, normal Chris Redfield, not um, super jacked Chris Redfield that we've got in the later games. Uh, particularly Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil uh, Village. Uh, that that but yeah, I never cleared that for some reason. I don't know. I, the hunters were quite difficult in that as well. But I just remember never clearing it for some weird reason. I have no idea why. Maybe something else came out that just took my interest. So so I would I would. I would recommend playing that if you get the chance. Uh, there's hundreds of ports of it at this point. Um, another one. Something's on fire. Oh dear. I think something just died. Uh, number... was it? 13? I don't know if I've been keeping count, but... Number 13 would be Resident Evil 1. Um, now... The original Resident Evil... Is I mean, sorry, the remake is by far the better game for sure. But I have a, a really nostalgic place in my heart for the original game. I mean, the original game, the dialogue is just downright awful, and the graphics aren't that special. But oh my, it's such an amazingly 
put together game for the time it came out in, and yeah, the graphics have aged pretty bad. They're just like Goldeneye, I suppose. Ah, but oh my, the, the the dialogue is just it's just brilliantly cheesy. There's just so much to love about the original Resident Evil. Um, but the section I'm on about is once you once you go past the um, once you go outside to the back garden, you uh, it's the way you fight Plant 42. Uh, you you have to basically kill Plant 42 with a load of like uh, chemical like mixtures and stuff. Um, and literally, when you go back back into that the uh, back into the mansion, you've got like all these new keys. You know, it, it's quite fun. You know, are you all ready to ex continue exploring the mansion? And you get this little cutscene, and the hunters appear. And the hunters are um, in the original Resident Evil are. They're not impossible to beat, but they're absolutely deadly. Um, they can take your head off with one clean hit, and um, then you're reloading. And I had to do that constantly. Um, but uh, that—that's another one that has always, always comes to mind with Resident Evil. That cut, that cut scene. No matter how janky it might look by today's stands, it's always one that fills me with dread when I get to that section of the game. Even with the, the like the remakes, like Res RE2 remake was brilliant. Although the station area is by far the best part of that game. And um, RE3 remake, I enjoyed the new voice acting. I enjoyed the game, but it was far too short, and there was far too much content cut out of it. I'll never understand why Capcom hasn't done like a like a DLC and added in all those areas they've cut. But I imagine that would be practically having to make an entirely new game. So, uh, so that was anything that bothered me, but that's that's me being an overall like a, a super fan of Resident Evil. So uh, that that really bugged me. But generally, uh, with Resident Evil, P the PS1, the original, and obviously two, and uh, Nemesis, I have got a soft spot for because I played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis first uh, before I had the courage to go back and play all the other games as a teenager. So. There is that. Um, number 14, changing the heat temperatures of the PAL cards in uh, Metal Gear Solid. Again, Metal Gear again. Um, there are some differences between the remake and I have even I haven't actually got the original. I've got Twin Snakes on GameCube, but I played the original uh, PS1 Metal Gear Solid first. And literally, you, in the original game, you have to travel. You've got these power cards, and they've got different temperatures, and they have to be at like a hot temperature, a cold temperature. I think it's red, blue, and yellow, and I think yellow is like the is yellow the normal temperature, something like that. And red heat, and then blue cold, and you have to go back to different areas in the game. So again, you got you got to do another um, travel back to certain areas, call the card to that temperature in that area, and then run back to the area as quickly as you can before the car changes its temperature again without avoiding while trying to avoid the guards and then put the card in and you've got to do that twice I think yeah I think it's twice yeah hot and cold and then obviously you've got your normal temperature as well so you do that and you got to keep doing that um, whereas in Twin Snakes you can you can just go to there's one area you can go to but you can actually to heat the card up you can jump down on us to certain platforms you can drop to as long as you catch the platform you can shoot a pipe and then it'll spray you with like hot spray and it'll actually turn the card red which makes the backtracking uh, you don't have to do it essentially which is I'd say less intrusive but I still think the original has the better idea it makes you work for everything in the original Metal Gear Solid and Twin Snakes is just essentially uh, running it's Metal Gear Solid 1 uh, the music isn't quite as memorable as the original, and obviously the graphics on the PS1 version aren't as good, but I I kind of prefer the original Metal Gear Solid, if I'm honest. But again, I'm nostalgia baiting, I suppose. And then I've got two others that I've just literally come to mind. Um, if you remember the, act, the comedy actor uh, Rick Mail, you know, Bottom, uh, the Young Ones, uh, sad that he died a few year, uh, quite a few years back now, but um, he was a very, very good comedic actor in 
just about everything. And he was and he was fantastic in uh, Black Adder in particular. Uh, but he was in a game called Hogs of War, which was like a it's like a 3D version of Worms, and it was essentially Worms with pigs. You'd pick a team of pigs, and then you'd just fight each other, just single player or multiplayer, I believe, and you would uh, fight each other essentially uh, like Worms. But his he he used to do the commentary for it, and um, and again he's in a lot of like he was in a lot of Super Nintendo ads in the UK. Again, we didn't have the whole Genesis does what Nintendo don't. We didn't have quite as aggressive ads in the UK, even though. In my experience, Sega was probably more popular than Nintendo because they had a bigger base, essentially for the Master System, than um, uh, Nintendo did until obviously that sort of changed uh, as you went through the 90s. Um, so he, he was in a lot of those types of ads and games, advertisements, so that was always cool. And uh, on the Sega side, I think they had a guy who... who um, he was in things like Holby City, and he was also in uh, Stargate SG-1. He played one of the the villains in that as well. I can't remember the guy's name now, but y you'll know the guy if you see him. He's in loads of UK stuff. I think he's like a UK actor. Uh, so yes, that was one that just come to mind. And a weird one that also come to mind was um, Echo the Dolphin. The very, very first game. Oh, I've never played any of the Echo games. They were just... A fascinating project, a fascinating game. Incredibly difficult game, for sure. Uh, but I remember loading it up, not knowing what to expect. And like, you you swim between the islands, you can jump over the islands and stuff. And um, then there's a point in the game where you jump up into the air, out of the ocean, and then this like storm hits and it sucks all your friends and your relative dolphins out of the sea. It's really, really hard. Um, I've never played more than maybe an hour of it. Um, and there's a sequel as well. But I remember coming across an, an alien dealing with sharks. The jellyfish are killer in that as well. So there was a Dreamcast one, uh, but I've never played. And I think... I think I, was that it? And my, I don't know if there's any Game Boy Advance games or anything, but I don't recall. But I think there might have been some Game Gear ports as well. But uh, yeah, another really weird, uh, weird game for some reason that, that always sticks in my mind. And um, I'm just trying to think what else. There were. And EA, EA games, yes, you know the evil company that. Uh, recently made a tweet stating that um, no, it was a while back, a year or two back they said multiplayer games aren't important to them and then now backtracked on that and said oh, single player games are very important to us now, yes, basically because it's the only thing that's actually selling because all the crap you put out uh, particularly Battlefield 20, uh, 2042 which was an absolute shit show I mean I played the beta for it and you couldn't play the main game it just didn't work um, I had more fun playing the old Battlefield, um, was it Bad Company 2? That was in multiplayer that worked, but the main game, <laughs> Battlefield 2042, just didn't work. It was broken beyond belief. Um, but you can, there's many big YouTubers that have covered that and are still covering it to this day. So yeah, so yeah, those are the ones that, that come to mind. Um, if you've got any in the comments, please drop them because I'm sure I've missed loads. This. It's quite difficult to go from the Sega Master System generation, NES generation, all the way to the like the PS5, and I I don't have as many memorable moments with say the PS4, PS5, Xbox One. Um, maybe I'm just getting old. I don't know. But I, uh, games today are not all easy. Obviously, your Dark Souls, Demon Souls are games, but I've never had. I've got a great deal of respect for those games, but they're games I've never really had the patience or the interest to play. Um, but I mean, there are so many games. You think about that generation of games from the very early 90s, maybe a few years back, late 80s, up till now. There is a lot of games to sort of try and fit in a, like a, a list of memorable moments. And those memories are good and bad, for sure. You know, Desert Strike played that recently bit rough 
good game, but incredibly difficult in places. Road Rash, love it. Um, played the first two games, haven't played any of the others ever since. Um, but again, I suppose I'm nostalgia baiting in some ways.